protesters threaten students and a lecture hall is torched as violence erupts at Wits University. An illegal hazardous Johannesburg crash is closed down following the death of a toddler in its care. A very happy Monday to you. You're watching E! News Direct. I'm Duduzi Leramela. And I'm Sandy Lekangose. Good evening. To comment on any of our stories, you can find us, of course, on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E! News Direct. And our hashtags tonight are VITS and ANC NWC. And this leads our bulletin. Wits University has been rocked by a fresh wave of protests, which saw an empty lecture hall being set alight. Protesters are demanding free education now and want an end to outsourcing. It started when they threatened staff at the fees office this morning. The institution says most of the issues raised by the protesters are already being addressed. Wits says the protest action violates a court order and security has been deployed to stabilize the situation. University spokesperson Sharona Patel believes that some of the protesters are from other universities and political parties. We believe that today's protest is uh, politically orchestrated. We believe that it's part of a larger campaign with larger national objectives. Uh, we are seeing individuals from uh, various political parties, from various universities, um, so not just big people here. We are seeing uh, members of COSAS, for example, on our campus as well, which is quite worrying. Um, and it's for this reason that we believe that it's not a big issue, but that they are using our campus as a flashpoint to launch a larger campaign. A Johannesburg crash where a 19-month-old toddler fell into a pool and died has been shut down. Authorities say the facility was not only operating illegally, but also was a hazard to the children. Owami Njovu was a few months short of his second birthday. His father entrusted his care in the hands of teachers at the Rose Day Care Center in Bramley. But last Wednesday, his little boy died after drowning in a pool on the crash's ground. My son was negligent. He left for some time. Because they forgot about him till he went out to the pool. That makes me a worry. How did he ex escape from the pool was down there till they, he reached there and they were not looking for him. Because a kid can disappear three minutes, you must be knowing where he is. The toddler managed to make his way out of the door and down the stairs. He later ended up in this pool that was half full with rainwater. No one noticed that Owami was missing until his father came to collect him. The owner of the crash has admitted to operating illegally. We don't have license. We just started. So I was in the process of searching the papers. Yeah. And as a foreigner, it wasn't easy for me. A few hours after ENCA contacted the Department of Social Development, they arrived on the scene. There is no business whatsoever in, run, in looking after children. We believe that uh, any child could have been killed by a multiplicity of reasons. The place is hazardous. Officials are urging parents to do background checks before entrusting their children's care at any facility. Malunghe Lupui, Bramley. Park. An extended national working committee of the ANC is meeting in Cape Town. It's discussing the constitutional court's ruling on Nganda. The court found that President Jacob Zuma and the National Assembly violated the constitution. Zuma has since apologized. The South African National Defense Union has joined opposition parties and other groups calling for President Jacob Zuma to step down. The union spokesperson, Biki Khrev, has encouraged members to participate in campaigns calling for Zuma's removal. But Defense Minister Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula says Khrev should be charged. Speaking before the NWC meeting, the Defense Minister said mobilizing the Defense Force against the President amounts to a coup. It's not about the President. For me, it's about a man who makes a statement to incite men and women in uniform. It is not done. Whatever political crisis we may be having, we need to find a political solution. And if he is mobilizing men and women in uniform, what it actually amounts to is a coup d'etat. And coup d'etat will not be allowed in South Africa. If anything, in my view, he should be charged. 
Well, the National Assembly is set to debate a motion to impeach President Jacob Zuma tomorrow. The ANC leaders have asked the funeral of an Mkondo Wasizwe military veteran to encourage members to stand up to corruption. They lamented the current state of the party and called on members to show courage. Deceased MK veteran Sharish Nanabai was disciplined and principled. Houting Premier David Makura says that the ANC is in crisis and this type of selfless attitude is sorely needed. There, there was never dissonance between what the, the ANC feels and what it says and what ordinary people feel. And when there is such a dissonance, we must be worried as ANC leaders and ANC cadres and ANC members. He says that ANC members must not leave the party, but rather not be afraid to correct it. Uh, the Constitutional Court judgment is a statement that we have missed a step. We must retrace our step. We must, we must re, we recommit ourselves that we, we will always do that which is consistent with the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Makura has denied rumours that some ANC Houting branches are planning to march against President Jacob Zuma. Finance Minister Praveen Gordon, who also attended Nanabai's funeral, believes the courage of the previous generation has fallen to the wayside. Many of these institutions today are also being tested. They are also uh, being influenced, or attempts are being made to influence them to do the wrong things and not serve the democracy that Sirish Bhai and others have fought for, and instead serve selfish interests. Gordon says he's seeking to insulate our generation against corruption. <laughs> Theresa Taylor, Johannesburg. President Jacob Zuma's nephew, Kulubu says Zuma, has been named in the Panama Papers leak. 11.5 million documents that exposed how the rich and powerful hide their wealth offshore were leaked today. The list also includes aides to Russian President Vladimir Putin, world leaders and even celebrities, including soccer superhero, superstar Lionel Messi. Zuma has fobbed off the revelation, saying there's nothing to it. He has not been accused of any illegal activity in relation to the offshore accounts. Kulubuse Zuma now has something in common with world leaders David Cameron, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. They've all been mentioned in one of the largest data leaks in history. The documents are from Mossack Fonseca, a Panama-based law firm. They indicate that Zuma was authorized to represent Capricat Limited one of two offshore companies involved in oil deals in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Hundreds of billions of rands traverse the South African and global economy every single day. But it's not always known how that money was earned, what it will be used for, where it will be spent, or most worryingly, who the money is connected to. There is no evidence of wrongdoing by Zuma or any of the other names mentioned. But. It is a well-known fact that offshore investments often serve as a front to hide dodgy dealings. It seems to us that uh, there's a fine line then that then can emerge between doing business legitimately or lawfully and hiding, as it were, unlawful activities under the cloak of, uh, of, of confidentiality. Often companies around the globe pursue tax avoidance strategies and choose the offshore option to look after their bottom line. What I think is interesting from an ethical point of view is that increasingly we're outraged by it. We're saying these are companies just, uh, you know, finding clever ways of getting their, their incomes or their revenues into lower tax regimes. And of course, for a developing country such as ours, uh, that loss of tax revenue is a real issue. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists worked with over 100 media partners around the globe to uncover this story and has promised further revelations from Zimbabwe, Kenya, Nigeria and South Africa later this week. Nicolas Bauer, Johannesburg. International headlines now and the first boat carrying refugees deported from Greece has arrived in Turkey as part of a controversial European Union plan. Under the deal, refugees arriving illegally in Greece will be sent back to Turkey if they do not apply for asylum 
or if their claim is rejected. And for each Syrian migrant returned to Turkey, the EU is to take in another Syrian who has made a legitimate request. Today's first group sent back from Greece included nationals from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Morocco, but no Syrians. And Brussels airport has reopened for three flights amid tight security controls. Just 12 days after the suicide attacks that killed 16 people there. Stringent new checks were put in place at Zaventem after police threatened to go on strike if security was not improved. It's hoped the airport will be back at full capacity in time for the start of the summer holidays at the end of June. Meanwhile, to do Zile is standing by with all your social media. Indeed, thank you so much, Sandile. And as we told you a little bit earlier in the bulletin, Wits University today saw a re-emergence of the Fees Must Fall movement. A group of protesters disrupted university programs and the lecture hall was set alight. Social media users are asking why now and whether the Fees Must Fall movement has been hijacked to fulfill greater political agendas. And moving on, EFF leader Julius Malema claims he was pulled over and confronted by armed officers in an unmarked vehicle in Santon last night. He says officers pointed their guns at his car and forced him out. Malema alleges that the officers then claimed it was a mistake. Police Minister Natin Tleko has called on Malema to open a case, but his party says he won't lay any charges. That's because he doesn't trust the SAPS. Remember to comment on any of our stories. You can, of course, find us on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E News Direct. Or you can head on over to our website, that's enca.com forward slash direct. Do stay with us for your business news after this, as well as your detailed weather forecast. Welcome back. Money Matters Now and the Rural Agricultural and Allied Workers Union wants farmers to be severely penalized for not complying with the new minimum wage. Last month, the Labor Department announced a hike in wages for farm workers. The department says it's aware of farmers who are not complying. Some farmers say they can't afford the hike due to the severe drought that is draining resources. Retaining staff is a primary condition to receiving drought aid from a government. The union argues that current wages are already too low and workers need more in order to survive increases in food and petrol prices. And with that, let's see how the markets perform today. Let's check in with the weather center now. Here's Candace. The work week started off with a large amount of thunderstorm activity over the interior and we're expecting those thunderstorms to continue on Tuesday. A cold front also sweeps up the east coast, bringing in some rainfall along the southern and southeastern coastline and cooling temperatures off from the west. It'll be an overcast and wet day around the city and that's a combined effect of the cold front as well as a band of thunder showers extending over the northeastern and central interior. We're still expecting warm weather over the northern part of Kozuli Natal with isolated to scattered thunder showers. We'll see cloudy and wet weather over the southern parts with widespread thunderstorms and the possibility for heavy rainfall over the southern part of Kwazulu Natal as well as the northeastern part of the Eastern Cape. We're expecting thunder showers over the interior but with the possibility of rain as we head towards the coast. A high of around 20 degrees for the southern Cape coastline with the possibility of rainfall on Tuesday. Mostly sunny and mild for Cape Town at 23 degrees. A slightly cooler day for the northern Cape on Tuesday 27 for Uppington and Prisca with thunder showers in the forecast for Pastersburg and Kimberley. Isolated to scattered thunderstorms 
homes are forecast for the free state 23 degrees for Bloemfontein. You'll see highs in the upper 20s for the northwest of the most Cardi day and isolated thunder showers on Tuesday. We're expecting dry weather as we head towards Limpopo, just shy of 30 degrees for Polokwane, with the rest of those highs in the low and middle 30s. Dry weather is forecast over the northeastern part of Mpumalanga, but with the isolated thunder showers for the rest of the province, we're forecasting partly cloudy weather and a 40% chance of thunder showers for Gauteng, Johannesburg and Soweto at 26 degrees, and Pretoria warming up to 28. On Wednesday, though, we're expecting cloudy wet and much cooler weather over the northeastern and eastern part of South Africa. Highs will only make it into the teens for Gauteng. Sizzling hot, though, over the western part of the country all the way through to Thursday, while things remain cold and wet, particularly over the eastern half of South Africa. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a great night. Thank you, Candice. Here's what's coming up after the break. The legendary Beatles studio sessions at Abbey Road come alive again in London. Abbey Road was more than just a recording studio for the Beatles. That's why they even named an album after it. Classic album. And now the hit-making era of the 60s has come alive again with a live restaging at the Albert, or Royal Albert Hall, rather, in London. Following casting sessions around the world, the show's producers found their fab four. And they're taking audiences back in time to when the Beatles recorded their famous hits at London's Abbey Road Studios. Surrounded by transparent screens with projected recording details, the actors belt out the tunes alongside musicians to replicate the vocals sung, instruments played and arrangements used at the time. Show's creative consultant is the former sound engineer at Abbey Road. It seems as though it was only like eight weeks ago, but I, I mean, I, when I've been hearing some of these songs and performing, I sort of tear up a bit because I know, you know it brings back a lot of memories that, uh, of the past. We never, never dreamt in a million years that, that uh, you know, these songs would just carry on for forever. The sessions premiered over the weekend and will tour the UK and selected European countries until the 15th of May. Here's a reminder of the day's top stories before we say goodbye. Protesters threaten students and a lecture hall is torched as violence erupts at Wits University. An illegal hazardous Johannesburg crash is closed down following the death of a toddler in its care. And that's a wrap from the E! News Direct team. Yep, up next, the City, we're back same time tomorrow. Remember to share your views with us. You can send us an email to enewsdirect at etv.co.za. You can just chat to us on Twitter and Facebook, and our handle is at enewsdirect. Until tomorrow night, have a fantastic evening. Goodbye.